guys, Andy from Hi-Fi Collective here. Today we are going to be doing an open of this, the Cambridge A1, which is quite a popular amp. Elliot bought this for £40 on eBay. And we're going to pretend that we are somebody like yourselves who might be into Hi-Fi and wants to do a bit of tweaking. So, uh, first things first, we've got to take the lid off. So always very important that you keep all your screws and use the right screwdriver because you can sh shred across of a you know Aussie drive screw quite easily. You know, one of the screws on this was incredibly tricky to get out, but a bit of brute force put it. <clears throat> so inside the amp we have you can see here that they've got a space for the phono stage. So this looks to be basically lots of dim leads going in here, but nothing here. So obviously this particular item doesn't have a phono stage in it. It's solid state, obviously there's no valves, but this heat, heat sink is gonna be for the output stage. You can see the chips there stuck to the board. Um, a group of kind of largest caps that's going to be your power supply. So you can see your diodes here. They'll be doing. There'll be a full, full wage, full, a full way bridge rectifier, and then it looks to me like it's got a positive and negative supply. The fact that there's two banks of caps like that. So generally, what people hit first is the volume control. But we'll we will we will have a go at that later. But. Today we're going to look at the power supply caps um, because electrolytics, they do dry out and if it's been sat around for a while, as this amp may well have been, um, you can get some incredible improvement with changing your power supply caps. Generally what it does, it tightens up the base and gives you more control in the, the signal. So we've taken this slightly apart anyway, but it's pretty, it was pretty straightforward to figure out what to take apart to get get to. Here's your uh, speaker outputs, um, the screws there. Interestingly, it's kind of upside down the screen, so if you're peering over from, obviously you would generally would do, you can actually read it because it's upside down. Or is that a mistake? I don't know. Anyway, so three screws there, here's your um, speaker posts. Um, they had screws on the board, but what we've done here, these are on standoff, so we've come from the underside because it is very useful to keep the standoffs on. Um, obviously, before you do anything, you've got to make sure it's not plugged in. It's not plugged in. And also, sometimes reservoir power supply caps hold their charge, so just be very careful until you can get inside and you can discharge it or just do a check. Um, so effectively, under the underside screws here that hold the actual power amp module and power supply. Um, the heat sink was held down here, a couple of screws there, and down there you've actually, one of those screws has a, an earth loop which is connected there. It's always actually a good idea before you start doing any of these, take photographs of everything. So you can, if there is an issue, you can just rebuild it to how it was originally. You've got your toroidal transformer here, you've got your on-off switch with your fuse here, you've got your, there's your volume control, there's your other controls here, it's got tone control this one. Um, I think that's your the phono stage which, which we're not using. Um, and there's your voltage amp bits here, chips, one for each channel, which will feed the signal into your power supply. Sorry, not your power supply, your output stage bits here and here. So let's lift the board out. It's quite a nice design, this Cambridge, because it's easy to get access to everything. So with my knowledge of electronics, I, I know that these are the reservoir caps. Every power supply has caps in it to, just to smooth out the, the rough DC to smooth DC, so here and here. Um, I can identify where the earth is, 
um, because obviously there's your speaker output here and this is connected to this so this bit here all the way around here is your earth portion of this board so these eight connections here they're where the caps sit so I know that all this is earthed so what I'm going to do just to be absolutely sure it's discharged just a quick clip like that it's insulated and then just put something put it on earth I know that's an earth connection and just touch what could have a bit of charge there's no charge anyway so most amps will discharge anyway there'll be a current draw and it will just feed into the, into the actual load and it will discharge so what we're going to do here let's go back to the other side you've got four caps here for the, um, the positive supply and four for the, the negative supply and they're all the same and they're 2200 UF so I've done a sketch here so this is the same as that there so this part here is your earth all the connections on the inside are to earth here so that's how I know that it's a dual supply because you've got negative on the output positive here so this will be plus 25 volts or I'm guessing it's 25 volts I've not actually tested it and this will be a minus 25 volts um, so the caps are actually arranged like this so you've got a bank of four caps in parallel so if they're all 2200 UF that will equal 8800 UF 35 volt so we're going to replace these with two caps at 4700 UF um, and we're going to go for the Mundorf ones they're, these are 40 volt rated and they're, they're great caps one of the most popular power supply caps we, we sell so first things first I'm going to label up what I'm doing here it's very easy to do work on things and then not really remember what you're actually doing because you're taking the stuff out cool so we're going to get rid of these caps now Right, so we've just removed most of the solder off the PCB. Now we can take the caps out. So and you can see that one's a bit. That one there. So what I generally do is you just lever it. That's one. That's another. You want to see. Well, we, we're probably going to use one of these holes, but not both. So there's a cap there. So you can see some residue there. I don't know whether that's glue or maybe gunk from the cap. But um, These are the ones, the new ones we're going to be putting in. You can see that the pitch, the pitch is the distance between the two terminal pins, is wider. So you can, we're going to have to actually drill, drill some holes. But we already knew that. Anyway. So let's continue taking these out. There, yeah, that comes out. That's good one, that one. And then this one. And this one. So sometimes it needs a bit of help along the way. And then the last one. Oh, that comes out really easy. the other one you can see the bits of glue I, I think they're glue I've got a feeling they're glue anyway right let's go for the other side there's a bit of heat you don't want to stress these things board too much they're not that durable So 
It's like pulling out teeth. But just easier. Another one. Right. So that's all. They're all out now, but I'm just going to give it a bit clean up because we want to see the holes. So now we've got to make provision for fissing these. So you want to be using holes on the inside. So as we marked it up, we know which way around it goes. So you want that to go there, and then you can put it there. See what I mean? So we are going to have to drill some holes. So I've used a drill bit, which is I think just about 1.2 mil, which correlates to the terminals of the this. So we're going to use that hole and that hole. Then we're going to have to make two new holes. So just very carefully get in the original hole. And then get through pretty easily. Remember, we're replacing four caps with two caps. Yep. So you can see here, we basically want to be out from that hole because there's plenty of room here for but as close to these as possible because you see the PCB, this is solder resist so it won't take solder so we have to use the original pad but we sh might be able to bend the lead over to touch there. There we go. So make sure your pins are straight. That's your negative side. And see where I've done the hole there? That'll be fine. And then this one. too much force on it because So negative one goes there, and you're in there. So that'll fit like that. But what I hadn't account, what I hadn't thought of, was the fact that that won't be able to fit there in that hole. So we're going to have to put it on this one, this side. So the other one will fit. A silly mistake. So basically, let's figure out how we can get this fitted. So, so that will fit there without touching anything, hopefully. Okay, so 
so these caps we're, are going to be bigger. They are bigger than these, obviously. So to, when you do it, make sure you can actually fit them before you start drilling the holes. Right. I'm getting here now. So. Negative side. So that goes there, that one, then this one. Oops. Negative side is that side, isn't it? So, like that. Let's just snuff it. So we go like that. Now, these caps have little sticky pads on. So we're gonna go in for the solder now anyway. So take those off. Stick them on. Oops. Take this one off. Get rid of this shit. Yeah, it's like glue. see these are where the new holes have come through but we need to attach it to there so I'm going to solder the ones that have got the solder pads on first taking ages to get through but the joints are good um, so here and here the best way to do this is to get a bit of wire, get it in the original hole. So I'm going to be using, obviously this, these four holes here are your earth kind of plate. So I'm gonna use that one there and that one there. So they're the first two I'm gonna open up. So I'm gonna drill. Nice and easy. It's always a good idea to, even though you can't properly fit them, just get an idea of the size and how much room you need to fit them. So, but the cap positive is on the outsides, there and there. So obviously that's a negative. Negative goes there, but you wanna make sure that you're going to be on the right side of the plate on the other side. So if I know which hole it is, that's fine. There's plenty of room there. That's that one, isn't it? Yeah. So for this one, there. Just going to do a little scratch. Put the hole there so I know where I can drill. So I've done a little scratch mark where I know I'm going to solder it. But oh, drill the hole, sorry. Nice and easy. It's great. Not that I'm going to solder it in here, but I just want to make sure it fits nicely. Make sure it's all right around again. So there, it comes through there, which is fine. Because there's the original hole that it was. We'll just do a, a 
the connection between there and there. So that's great. And then we're gonna do the other one. See, so the issue I had there was this obviously is separate, that is your earth, but this is your supply. So you don't, <laughs> you can quite easily do, you drill into here, and that's not great because all you're doing is just putting a cap, doing nothing. So moved it along a bit, and we, we're now good. Right, so there is the solder, but we're going to take the sticky tabs off. Remember, positive on the outside. What should do? Um, and again, positives on the outside. Boom. older than now. So there you go, straightforward enough. Bit of jiggery pokery with the um, drilling holes and things and getting it right. Um, there you go, just got to put it back together again and switch on, I'm sure, sure she'll be fine. <laughs>